Hey, happy Friday. It is the weekend and this video is going to be about setting up my bullet journal. Not my, not like a artsy bullet journal with all the drawings and everything, very basic bullet journal. And the main thing that got me hooked on the bullet journal was the table of contents. So stay tuned for that. I'm still going to give you my weekend updates and what's going on and you can skip through those. Another thing that you can do is speed up these videos. <laughs> I watch some YouTube videos on 1.25 or 1.5, so you can always speed up videos. All right, let's talk a little bit about yesterday and today as a principal, because I do like to include that in these videos. Yesterday was an unexpected half day for bad weather, which meant that I kind of knew it was going to be a half day just because a lot of schools had already canceled. But we weren't notified that it was going to be a half day until 8.30 and the first bell rings at 8.20. So kids were there, teachers were there. My goal was to get the half day schedule out by 9 if we got notified early enough. And that worked out. So we switched to the half day schedule really fast at the last minute and then it was a half day. Well, then they announced a different time that never in the history of the world have we ever let out at that time. And then that created a little bit of chaos with their parents and teachers because parents are used to buses at certain time. Anyway, it was just a big, huge ordeal. So yesterday was chaos. Turned out I don't think anything froze or anything. Maybe last night it was kind of cold and icy a little bit, but not too much. Today is a planned half day and it's a PD day. And we have, what I usually do is an hour and a half, an hour and 15 minutes for a PD day so that teachers then also have time to work in their room. So I wanna to try to find a balance, PD and work in your room. My mom is coming this weekend, I'm super excited. If you don't know, my mom lives six hours away. My whole family lives far away, so I only see them maybe four or five times a year. My mom does come to softball tournaments and that's awesome. And most of our softball tournaments this summer are going to be in Kansas City, so she'll get to come to most of those. It's going to be an awesome weekend, but I will film just some different stuff that's going on this weekend. And then the biggest portion of this, I think, is going to be the bullet journal portion. So if you want to just kind of fast forward or skip to that part, you can, but I do want you guys to see how I use a bullet journal. And I've used it both digitally and in paper. Have a great Friday. Good morning. My children are still asleep. It's a Saturday morning. I got up at five because I like to get things done in the morning and I want to go to the grocery store this morning as well. My mom is coming this weekend, so I'm super excited about that. We're just going to hang out. She likes to stay at a hotel that has a pool so the kids can go to the pool but my oldest daughter goes to Kansas City for softball today, and then my youngest daughter did not wanna just stay home today like she usually does, so she could be TikTok famous. Um, but anyway, I am going to upload my podcast and finish my goal setting video, and then start programming out or scripting out my bullet journal. It's not really a bullet journal, so I, I hate to, call it that I just use the philosophy of the bullet journal so I'm going to work on that and then we'll just see what, how the day progresses I'm thinking you were made for me it's in my birthday yeah cause I gotta say you're looking like a gift for me wrapped up nice and neat baby get in my way now don't be shy we'll be here dancing day and night get in my groove now don't be I'm getting ready to show you the inside of this bullet journal. This one was the very first one that I ever started, and it's not exactly only principle oriented. I just needed a spot that I could put my information, all of it, every day as I get it so that it's in the same spot. Therefore, this is what I started with. The one that we're going to make together and that I'm going to talk about is going to be more geared toward being a principal and using this method as documentation. I'll do 
that explanation right after I just show you the beginning and how I started because when you start your first one is going to be different than the final one or new renditions of it kind of as you go along. Let's take a look at this one and then we're going to make one together. So I'm going to flip this open. The what to include is what I thought that I was going to include in this. And then the index is actually the table of contents. I called it index first and then I decided to call it table of contents. But when I start this journal, there's nothing here. And I don't write anything here until after I have quite a few pages already done. You're going to see down here that all of my pages are numbered. And that's the key for making it searchable and being able to use your table of contents. So the table of contents and the pages being numbered are the game changers for this. Clearly you can see that I didn't leave enough room for the table of contents because I started information on a hyperdoc here and then I started the table of contents again, then I had kindergarten ideas and then again more table of contents. So I didn't really plan that out very well so I need more pages for the table of contents. You can see when I started this, I was keeping track of my blog ideas and my TPT ideas and just keeping those YouTube video ideas. I taped this in for my dad's funeral. I ended up using something else, a whole other notebook just for the funeral in and of itself. Here are principal ideas that I was going to create on these pages. I don't know what's on there, so I'm going to close it for just a second. But I was going to work on some ideas for principles. So this is good that I got this back out because I can look back because I kind of took a break and I can look at those. I started tabs. You can see that I started um, keeping tabs in here and then I ended up not doing this. This is actually a great idea for your master grocery list. Keeping something like this. I know we keep them on apps now so I don't even need this anymore. But this part was supposed to have post-it notes with meals on them. So hamburgers and macaroni and cheese, tuna casserole, pasta cum broccoli, and then each week you can just move these around. And I had other ones in here. I just didn't use that like I thought that I was going to use that as well. I marked off a couple of other things I thought that I would show you guys that were in here. I actually took Tabitha Caro's uh, smartphone marketing school months ago, and this is where I kept my notes. I have a ton of notes in here blog updates, how to keep track of my blog. Hang on, there were a couple of other ones in here. Though here we go. Here's advanced marketing, things like that. Um, where was, I had a bingo game, a leader in me bingo game. Anyway, it's in here somewhere. Oh, teacher YouTubers I used to watch back in the time. I had a whole list of those. I stopped for a second and found some things. I went to LeaderCast Women. It's a one day conference back in 2017 or 18. And I took this and these are my notes. Most of the rest of this are notes from podcasts, from books, from different things like that. The rest of this, they're podcast notes and stuff like that. So that's what's the rest of this. But I wanted to show you whenever I was starting out, I bought a bunch of bullet journal temp supplies. And these you would use to make, you would trace with a pencil and you would make your... Um, your little to-do checklist like this with your pencil. So I had all these little stencils and all this stuff when this one was going to be a fancy bullet journal. But I very quickly went away from having an art, colorful, fancy bullet journal. This is the one that we're going to make together. And I'll talk a little bit about how this one can be more principle aligned or it can be principle and personal. That's just going to be up to you. It's hard sometimes as fast paced as our job is to keep things separate. I'm going to show you and walk through the table of contents and talk about numbering the pages. After we set this up, I'll come back and talk about some ideas of how you can use this if you decide to use this. Something that's beneficial about this one is that it folds over like this so that when you lay it by your desk it's not covering up your computer and laid out like this like these are 
when I lay these by my computer, I can't fold it over. So a spiral notebook may be the answer for you. But let's get this one set up. I am going to leave this first page open in case, in case I mess up. So I'm gonna start my table of contents right here. And you might wanna do it in pencil so you can trace over it or fix it or whatever. I'm gonna leave three pages, I think. I'm gonna, I counted my lines and I think I have 32 lines. I'll probably have a bazillion topics, but I'm going to leave three pages for my table of contents. So this is gonna be, all of this is available for table of contents. And since it's spiral, I can tear it out. So I'm gonna put a post-it note here to know this is where I'm gonna start. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna number all of the pages starting down here. Now I just do all of odd and then I switch over and I do all of even. So I'm gonna do one. And I'm gonna do quite a few. And then I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna go back because this is page one and I'm gonna do the even pages. And you understand what I'm doing. So that's it, that's how I set it up. Let's talk about some ways that you could use this as a principle. You get to work in the morning, you open this up to the first page, and you just lay it by your computer. A phone call comes in. You start at the top, you don't necessarily have to title it, but you take notes for your phone call. Down here, maybe you draw a line, a teacher comes in that morning and you need to take notes on what the teacher is saying. Then you take notes on that. Let's say that you have a grade level meeting. I don't necessarily need to take my grade level meeting notes in this notebook because we have Google Docs for those and I don't want to mix those things up. So in the Google Doc is where I keep that. So if I need information from the grade level meeting, I'm going to take it from the Google Doc, not from this notebook. Whatever you need to write in here, take it to meetings, take it to grade level meetings, whatever you need to use this for, this is the one thing that you take with you all the time. And then you may fill it up and you have to start another one. And that's the thing, you may have three to five of these for a school year, if so, but then you always know where this information is. I'm sure I've given you some ideas, but it's probably triggered some things in your mind of the, some things that you want to do, my dog can't handle me talking to the camera. I don't know who she thinks I'm talking to, but she has to sit up in my lap or she'll whine and bark at my feet. So anyway, hopefully this was helpful and maybe this is a way that you can document some things. I know there are things like the Rocket Notebook and that scans right into your Google Drive or whatever you keep up with, but this I have used personally and professionally and right now, they are kind of combined because I really just want to keep track of one notebook. You could be one of the things I love. Sunday morning breakfast.